What's up, guys? We're back with a fight breakdown. UFC 298, Paul Acosta versus Robert the Reaper Whitaker. I'm going to break this fight down, give you my thoughts, and let's go from there. Start off with Hamza Chamaya's favorite fighter, Paul Acosta. All right, so he's 32 years old, um, six feet, um, weighs in on the middleweight side. He's got 14 wins and two losses. And his two losses, I believe, are from... Uh, Marvin Vittori and Israel Adesanya. So, <clears throat> not bad losses to have, but those are his losses. Um, his previous fight, he fought Luke Rockhold. Now, with Luke Hot Rockhold, <clears throat> he was on his way out already, right? So, Luke Hot Luke Rockhold was like, you know, at the door, one foot out already. So he was done. Um, it it was a good fight. It was a cool fight, I guess, especially when Luke clipped him. That was, uh, I think, the highlight of the fight. And then um, also maybe Luke rubbing him his face with some blood, which was a little weird, but whatever. Um, yeah, so that, it, it was a good fight. I mean, it was, a, it was a decent fight. Marvin Vittori, that was a shit show completely. Fought it at a catch weight. They didn't even, he didn't even make weight. He looked like he was just freaking hot air balloon blown up. He was fat. And he just wasn't him. So uh, terrible outing for that one. Um, with Israel Adesanya, you know, so many high hopes people have with him thinking that, you know, he might over go over there and destroy Israel Adesanya, but clearly that did not work out. He got, uh, he got embarrassed in that fight. And if you guys watch the fight, you know what I mean by embarrassed at the end of the fight. Um, but yeah, I think his like most notable fights that a lot of people remember is like, yo, Yoel Romero, um, he fought Uriah Hall, Johnny Hendricks. Um, but, I mean, he, he's been around for a bit, you know. Not super long. But, I mean, he's been, I mean, he said 2017 is pretty decent. So, it's not that bad. But, um, he's just been fighting once a year, though. Like, this guy, I mean, in his, in his early stage of his career, sure, he's fought three times in one year. And then after that, it's been just one year, one fight. One year, one fight. 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. He's just been, has like a shit luck of stream. Like his last fight that was supposed to happen with him and Hamza, he uh, was out because of a staph infection. So had some canceled fights, which I'm not too hum too sure 100% on that, but I know he had some, something like some fights canceled. And so he's just been, had he just had a bad road. I hope he even shows up in 298. I really hope, because if there's anybody we're expecting to fall out for 298, it's probably him, unfortunately. It's just the reality. Um, Reach, he's very similar to uh, uh, Robert Whitaker. I think he's like a, a one inch advantage, and that's about it. I think he's like, or he might be like an inch taller than him. So it, overall, they run around the same. Uh, typically, Costa looks like a bigger dude, but I'm sure that, you know, I mean, Whitaker's not a small guy himself, but you know, it's gonna be interesting. But jumping over to the main man, Bobby Knuckles, the Reaper, Robert Whitaker. Now, if anybody knows me or knows, seen my previous videos or anything that has to do with Robert Whitaker, he is one of my most favorite fighters. Obviously, I'm assuming you're guessing who I'm going to go with during this fight. But before I even go there, let's just jump into his breakdown. He's 33, just turned 33 a month ago. Prime time still. He's still there. Um, he's had quite a few losses on his record. Um, you know, he's he's also fought at welterweight at one point, and now he's obviously fighting at 185. Um, his last fight, <sighs> rough. You know, against Drakus Duplessis. Everybody had Drew Duplessis as, you know, no way he was gonna make it. I, I don't even know what the over-under was that on that. The betting odds probably were like... I think they were ridiculous. They had like Whitaker winning with flying colors. It was, it was nuts. And you know, Duplessis, kudos to him, went out there and did his thing against Whitaker. Um, but I also feel like, and I think I mentioned this in our previous video, that he didn't seem like he was 100% when he was fighting with uh, Duplessis. He was 
I think he did. He I think he also mentioned it in his in his MMA arcade pa- uh, podcast that he t- basically did not take Duplessis serious enough. I think he just was like, this guy has a weird fighting style, whatever, whatever. And I'm just like, you know, I'm gonna go in there, do my thing, get out, get in and out, probably. And that's probably the way he took at it. To looked at it. I mean, probably a shit way to look at things. Or probably not a good idea because anybody that steps in that o- octagon. Uh, kudos to you you know you're a warrior and you're there to fight you're there to take somebody else's head off so never underestimate anybody that was the lesson learned in this um ddp now obviously the champion but you know i think they'll fight again at some point they'll come back around uh he beat marvin vittori he lost to izzy and then he lost to izzy before that but he's also fought just big names I mean, just big names overall. I mean, he's got Kevin Gaslam, Cannoneer, Till, Romero, uh, Brunson, Uriah Hall. These All these names, Tavares, people that are still, well, not Brunson, but people that are still in the UFC. Um, like I said, he's also fought at welterweight where he's, you know, took some loss, unfortunately. But he's been in the game for a long time, 2012. He's been around forever. He's a veteran in the game, and he's only 33. Well, he just turned 33 like a month ago, so. He's a vet. He's a super vet. And he's still still going strong. Till still the top top five guys of the middleweight division. So I mean this fight is interesting as it gets. The first thing is we don't even know if Paul Acosta is gonna show up. That is the number one thing. Now, if he does show up, um these guys this fight becomes interesting because they're they both are on a similar trajectory. They both have had two losses in their last three fights, and they both um, fought high level guys. And they've also in that three within those three fights, they've also fought two of the three same people. Two of two of the, two out of the three are the same people they fought. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out because they're both strikers. They both can strike. They both can grapple, um, and they're both fairly strong for the most part. Um, I think at the same time, it's I don't see these guys completely just striking it out. And because they both possess a, dec- a pretty good amount of power, um, and they can end it fairly quickly um, with that power. Now, we know Costa can take a hit. Uh, Whitaker's had some rough losses in his career, um, granted by champions. So, you know, that's, that's, that's that, but you know, he obviously Whitaker could take one too, but they don't, it's, it's, it's rough to say that they're going to stand up that whole fight. Usually, you know, Costa's fights are a lot, mostly standing. I don't think this is going to be the case. I think these guys are going to use their ground game more because now here look at it like this ready i don't know how much whitaker has healed from his last loss and costa also had a staff infection we don't know if that's affected him any other way or not but i don't know like their previous issues that have happened with them or losses how does that affect them going into this new fight Like, whose will is stronger at this point? Because, obviously, they both had two losses in their last three fights. Um, Now, where do they go? Like, you know, like, do they... do? Who has a stronger will here? Like, because once they do win this fight, where do they go? Like, do they go for a title fight? Which I don't think so. Or do they go for a, you know, a number one contender fight at that point? Um, Obviously, there's new blood in the water now. Meaning to say, like, there's a, there's a new champion, so that's always nice because now people are going to have something else to chase. It's kind of like, you know, reawakening that inner fighter in them because Whitaker had took two losses from Adesanya, so I don't know how how crazy he felt about coming back for a third or, you know, how the fans wanted to see that again, how much the fans wanted to see that. Because personally, I didn't want to see it again. I didn't want to see Izzy versus Whitaker all over again. It just... We needed to change the scene regardless. Um, 
I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Costa going for a title against DDP. I want to see how that fight holds up because that, that that actually is interesting. Um, but, you know, let's just say this fight is done with them. If it goes through, everything goes all smooth. Whoever comes out vic victorious in this fight. Does that fight go to like, do they fight Hamza? Do they fight Sean Strickland? After this, because I don't th that I don't definitely don't think it's a it's a title fight, but you know, where does that go? Now, maybe that's not enough motivation for them. Maybe it is. You know, we don't know. So, like I said, I don't know what their previous losses or previous injuries have affected them, their mental state, how they feel. Because if, for example, if Whitaker wasn't in the fight with Duplessis. That means the mindset wasn't there. Maybe he's maybe he's revised himself and you know he's gotten better, especially seeing a new champion out there. Um, Costa, you know, fighting once a year. Maybe he comes back and he's, you know, like I said, new blood in the water. So maybe he's also revised himself. Maybe he's thinking like, you know what, I got a chance. Or maybe he just wants to have it out with Hamza and just get that fight. But. How do I this fight? How does this fight go? In t at least in my opinion, I'm gonna come out and say flat out, Whitaker's my guy. I like Whitaker. I've always followed him. I think he's he has an interesting fighting style. Um, not my most favorite fighter, but he's definitely my like top five active fighters currently. And um, you know, I'm I'm rooting for him. I'm going with Whitaker. I think Whitaker does it. I think Whitaker just keeps his composure this fight. Um, I think he uses his ground game this fight. Not going up against somebody that can, you know, tear you to shreds. Somebody like Costa. Um, I think he, he utilizes the ground game. Works on that a lot more. And he either gets it done by decision. Which is a lot of his fights, unfortunately. I'm looking at some of his fights right now. But a lot of his fights are unanimous decisions. So, I think I think that's kind of where it goes. I think he just you know puts a beating on Costa for f four round, three rounds, right? Three rounds of the fight, yeah. So, puts a beating on him for three rounds and gets it done with the decision. I mean, there's always a puncher's chance. Paulo could probably just knock him out. Um, do I see it happening? <sighs> I mean, listen, if if Whitaker loses, I don't know where he goes from here and i don't know how long it takes for him to get back to any title fight before it's too late because he's 33 right now he'll be 34 by the end of this year and he'll probably have another fight somewhere there lined up thinking him, let's just say he does win that fight he might come back the year after for maybe a number one contender fight at that point and let's just say he has to win that maybe by the year after that at the end of that year he might get another title shot and by that time he'll probably be like 35 that's a plus that's the only like that's that's if he wins all the way through but if he wins now i'm more than sure he can go for a number one contender fight maybe against hamzat maybe against sean who knows I think Whitaker gets it done. And listen, like I said, Paulo Costa has a chance for a puncher's chance. It's always there. But I don't know if that's going to be enough in this in this fight. I think as I was watching his podcast, uh, Whitaker's podcast, I kind of think he's also, you know, realigned himself, revised himself. I think he's going he's gonna to be different this time around. So I'm riding with the Reaper. Bobby Knuckles, I think he gets it done. Decision, I don't think it's a TKO. I don't think he ends Paulo Costa. But hey, listen, you know what? If Paulo Costa does win, I do want to see him against Hamza. I, I, we just all want to see that fight. In fact, I'm hoping he probably doesn't show up for this fight. I just want him to show up for a fight where he fights Hamza. Like, we've been all waiting for that and we're excited for that. And just this fucking guy just never shows up for him. So hopefully he does hopefully he can just make that fight and you know make the fans happy but hey 
that's my thoughts on this. I think that, you know, this is going to be a banger ass fight. This is going to be probably at least could be the fight of the night. Could be, could be. I mean, Volk is, Volk is the man, but I don't know. This could be the fight of the night. I feel like it's going to be a lot of back and forth here. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, who do you who do you guys have? Who are you guys going with? And why? Um, but yeah, that's that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like this video. Also, if you're enjoying the content, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can see all the new videos I upload.